Hello everyone and welcome to round 6 of this year's Superbet Chess Classic. We've had a lot of very interesting classical games so far, but this one is, uh, well, it's really weird, to put it mildly. Now you'll see what I mean by this, and if you're wondering about the title of the video, it's something Yasser Saravan uh, said during the, uh, the game, sometimes in the middle of the game. Uh, he uh, had a reminiscence sort of uh, of the game that um, uh, Wesley So played with the white piece against Gary Kasparov in 2016. I think it was the um, uh, some sort of a St. Louis Blitz tournament uh, where uh, Kasparov got absolutely crushed by Wesley. And then he said that uh, after the game that he felt as if their game was uh, Morphe versus Amateur because Wesley crushed him so hard. Uh, it's uh, sort of like a Morphe used to crush uh, amateur players back, uh, you know, in the day, like 150 years ago. So you'll see what I mean by this. Uh, let's check it out. A world champion Dingler and has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to c4. He goes for his English opening. Knight to f6 by Wesley. We have knight to c3. We have pawn to e5. And now, uh, usually you'll see knight to f3 or g3 here. Those are the top moves here. But Ding goes for e3. It's sort of a, a slow, slow line. Uh, bishop to b4 and now knight to g to e2. We have castles and pawn to a3. Now it is a, a fairly uh, rare system, but it has been used by none other than former world champion Magnus Carlsen quite a few times and he won some very nice games with it. So bishop back to e7 and now pawn to d4. We have e captures, queen captures and now uh, in the games that I've discussed, uh, for example, Magnus Carlsen uh, defeated Levon Aronian in the St. Louis um, uh, Blitz tournament in 2020, but that game continued with knight to c c6 as have most others that reach this position but here Wesley plays this weird knight to a6 move and uh, there's only one game in the database that reached this position and it's between a couple of um, lower rated uh, players so the idea is okay now you control c5 you can play bishop to c5 you can play knight to c5 you can play pawn to c5 bring the knight to c7 then to, to, to e6 so you have to be a bit careful here and Ding just brings the queen back queen to d1 and now uh, in the game that we mentioned knight to c5 was played but here we have pawn to c6 and it is already now as of move 8 that we have a completely new game and it's uh well if you if you want a good chance against the world champion with the with the black pieces then this is definitely what you go for uh knight to f4 by ding and now knight to c7 we have pawn to e4 grabbing more space controlling that d5 square and just rook to e8 preparing to put pressure on that e4 pawn we have bishop to e2 and now just the bishop to f8 so for the moment preventing ding from castling as the e4 pawn is hanging so queen to d3 uh, a very natural move you want to develop your queen defend the pawn here now queen to e7 just continuing to put pressure on that e4 pawn so f3 does also seems like a move you want to play the e4 pawn is now nicely protected you also control the knight on f6 very nicely uh queen to e5 nicely centralizing the queen uh, and now while well, you could castle uh, Ding first goes for knight to h3. He wants to remaneuver his knight to f2, and this is used by uh, Wesley to go pawn to d5, saying knight h3 is too slow, and I'm gonna take advantage of this. And okay, uh, the knight on h3 also guards the f4 square, so bishop to f4, it's also a nice way to get a few tempi in. Queen back to e7. And the, one of the problems for Ding is that he <laughs> this is only move 15, he's already down to 28 minutes on the clock, whereas Wesley has almost an hour on the clock. And now uh, you have to react to, to this d5 pawn. The problem is if you go, uh, let's say knight to f2, which you kind of plan for, knight to e6 is coming, which comes with an attack on the bishop, then you move the bishop, then d4 comes, attacks the knight. Already Wesley would have a, a, a defended pass pawn on d4, so and maybe giving him a bit too much. So first he captures on d5, and now you don't have bishop captures on h3. It'd be great if you did, but if bishop captures on h3 now, then d6 could be an issue. Like, it's not loss for black or anything. It's, like, uh, super complicated. Queen to d7. And now after g captures on h3, you can play knight to h5, go for the bishop. And now, okay, if you move the bishop, then you lose control of this pawn. If you move the bishop here, then black just trades, captures, captures, and then you lose the pawn. Let's say queen side castles and rook a to d8. And this is a position that... Um, uh, well, that we would definitely enjoy seeing in top-level chess. Uh, but, of course, the Ding avoids it. C captures on d5 was played. C captures on d5. And now, knight to f2. So, keeping an eye on everything. Knight to e6, attacking the bishop. And the bishop to e3. And here comes the move that Wesley took a few minutes to calculate. Because if it works, then you know that you're in for, uh, uh, for, for uh, <laughs> a, a, a very interesting game. 
pawn to d4. Here, uh, Wesley sacrifices a pawn, and you absolutely have to accept this pawn uh, because both of your uh, pieces are attacked here. So bishop captures on d4. Now rook to d8 goes after the bishop, and you can defend it. If knight b5, just pawn to a6, you have to play uh, bishop captures on f6. Attack the queen on e7. Queen captures on f6, leaving the queen on d3 still attacked, and now comes knight to g4. Uh, if you're wondering why not just play knight to d5, attack the black queen, well the problem is then queen captures on b2, and it's just um, uh, very tricky. For example, if you castle now, then comes knight to f4, attacks the queen, attacks the bishop, the bishop is already hanging, white just resigns this. So you can't really castle here, you would have to play something like queen to b1, but then you can just trade, captures, captures, bishop captures on a3, and from that position where you've sacrificed a pawn, now you're up a pawn and you also have uh, two connected pass pawns ready to be uh, pushed forward. So that's the problem. So after this, queen captures on f6, um, uh, Ding said, all right, I can't really go for that. He plays knight to g4, now attacks the black queen, queen to g5, and now uh, pawn to h4. Uh, you could also play queen to e3 here, uh, but then you run into knight to f4. Now threatening knight captures on g2 with a with a beautiful fork. Then comes pawn to h4, attacking the black queen. And after you play knight captures on g2, king f2, knight captures on e3, h captures on g5. You're gonna uh, play knight captures on g4, and you're gonna have a position like this: rook to d2, uh, a beautiful active rook, the bishop pair. Uh, you have two pawn islands. Um, uh, Ding would have three pawn islands. Also a messed up pawn structure on the king side. So this would again be much much better for black. Uh, but h4 uh, is, uh, is an attempt to sort of avoid all this, but it doesn't help. Uh, queen to a5. Uh, now, how can how can you continue here? Queen to b5. Of course, Ding wants to trade queens. Now, queen to c7. Ding says, your dark squares are absolutely horrible here. I'm going to play queen to g3 here, and there's no way for you to... Uh, to, to, to survive this. And also, uh, if you just castle here, then the problem again is queen to g3, and then the knight is coming to f4, and you haven't really castled the safety, which is, castling is kind of what you wh what you use it for. So here, knight to d5, again attacking the queen here, queen to g3, check, and king to f1, and here, this is the moment that everyone uh, was waiting for, and this is what Yasser meant when he said that, uh, uh, Kasparov said that uh, about his game against Wesley, that it was Morphe versus as amateur, feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for Wesley uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this absolutely wild variation. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook Captures on D5. Uh, Wesley did not play it, uh, just uh, just a heads up, but just to show you what's going on, he captures on d5, knight to f4, and how are you defending this position? It's uh, quite uh, quite a beauty, let's say knight to e3, uh, you uh, add a defender to the g2 pawn, now a6, you kick away the queen from this diagonal, queen a5, let's say bishop d7, uh, and, uh, well, whatever white plays is just insufficient. It's very hard to, to get a move in. You can't move any of your pieces. Let's say queen c7 attacks the bishop. Now even uh, a move like rook to e8 going after the knight. And now after a trade here, let's say queen captures. You're going to capture on e3. Now the g2 pawn is hanging. So queen to g4. Uh, but now you can even trade. Queen captures, pawn captures, knight captures on e2. And you are now you, you now have a, a bishop and the knight for rook, uh, of course, completely winning. And the problem is if king to f2, there's a bishop c5, so you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, so after king to f1, uh, Wesley did not play this. He played uh, bishop to d7, but the position is still incredibly complicated. Queen to a5 by ding, and now knight to d4. But now the problem for Wesley is that the time has equalized. Both of them now have 13 minutes on the clock, and 14 more moves uh, have to be made to, for time control to be reached. We have rook to d1, and now knight captures on e2. Uh, grabbing that, uh, that that piece, and you don't recapture. First, rook to h3. Of course, you want to get the queen away. You don't want to allow king captures here, and then queen captures on e2. Now comes b6, attacking the white queen, and queen to a6. Uh, another option is queen to d2, which would be much safer for ding, but um, they are both very low on time here. It's just not enough for a classical game. Queen to a6 was played, and now comes bishop captures on g4, one of the reasons why it was better to just move the queen back. Now, you're not in a hurry. You can play uh, bishop captures on g4 and give up your queen. And this is what he does. Rook captures on g3, knight captures on g3 with check, and now king to e1. And uh, 
uh, the, the the reason why that Quinta D2 line was better, and you're probably wondering why, and okay, I, I will show it um, instead of Quinta A6, look at this, Quinta D2, now there's Bishop captures on G4, and after Rook captures on G3, Knight captures on G3, and now what do you play? You're in check, if you play King to F2, just Bishop to D6, and you don't have captures on G4 because Knight captures here, and uh, you will win back the Queen, so this is a, 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 well, a, a very strong position for Black. So that's why, okay, Queen A6 was played, we already Already discussed this bishop captures rook captures knight captures with check and now king to e1 and the position is now uh as it is of course wesley is better here uh situation on the clock is six minutes for ding uh 10 minutes for wesley we have bishop back to e6 now and queen to b7 of course now uh, uh, Ding does not want to allow Wesley's rook to get uh, away from the back rank, as then, uh, of course, the rook on a8 would be hanging. So rook cap uh, uh, chases away the queen, queen to c7, and now knight to h5. We have pawn to g4 by Ding, and now knight to f6. We have knight to e7 check, and now bishop captures on e7. Queen captures on e7, and now rook to e8. Chasing away the queen, queen to b7. We have rook e to b8, again attacking the queen. Queen to e7, rook to e8, and queen to b7 uh, and after rook e to b8 and queen to e7 it was in this position on move 40 upon reaching time control that the players agreed to a draw as there's seemingly nothing more to be done here but this is uh well if you if we are to trust uh, uh very strong grandmasters and our good friend the engine which i've uh, allowed to crunch the numbers up until some depth 50 uh this is um well, either white can save this with miraculous play or uh, black can just play this indefinitely and win the game at some point. If we, if, I mean, uh, you give this position to any grandmaster, he will just squeeze that, squeeze that, squeeze that. It doesn't even have to be someone like Magnus. Anyone w will gladly play this uh, because white has no moves. And what I mean by this is, okay, we can... Uh, check it out a little bit. Instead of going for repetition here, let's say you play pawn to h5. What do you play? Uh, of course, uh, white cannot allow the, the lines of attack to open up because black has uh, too, too much material. Uh, for, for the queen, black has a uh, rook, a knight, and the bishop. That's, I mean, that's incredible. So you would have to play g5, and once the knight comes to h7, okay, it looks like the knight's a bit passive, but the knight can easily go, come back into the game. And now, how do you continue with white? There are no active moves here. You can play something like, okay, b4, always a good move, but doesn't really go, <laughs> will not take you all that far. Let's say king f2, you're going to chase away the queen. Let's say queen a6, you're going to play knight to f8. Now the knight is coming into the game. Let's say king g3, okay, you improve the position a little bit. Now bishop to c8, we have to kick away the queen from this b7 square. Uh, or you could play uh, something like rook to c8, also, also possible. And now if the queen goes back, okay, now you play g6. Uh, rook to c1, offer a rook trade, and now again you kick the queen away. Queen to a6, and now rook to d8. And, uh, uh, okay, rook to c7, if you want to continue playing this with black, you ha you will have to give up the a7 pawn for some activity. Let's say rook to d2, now you will play rook captures on a7, and after rook captures, queen captures, rook captures on b2. And now let's assess this position, because this uh, there's no other way to play this out. If black wants to continue, this is the only way for black to continue. Uh, okay, let's say you push a4, uh, not a problem, you will put a rook on b3, and now look at this, absolutely everything is defended. The bishop defends the rook, the rook defends the pawn, the knight and the pawn defend the bishop. You will put a king on, on g7, you will bring your knight, let's say, to e5, put pressure on f3. There is no way white can avoid this, there is no uh, active plan that white can come up with. White can just move the queen back and forth and, uh, you know, hope on every move that he averts uh, a disaster because, well... Uh, ch chances are the uh, disaster will happen here. So it's um, I don't know. I, I still I, I still haven't seen the interview with Wesley. I'm very eager to hear uh, what he has to say about this. Maybe uh, our understanding of chess is just not uh, on that level. Maybe maybe Wesley understands that even with uh, with perfect play that this is a draw. Maybe he knows positions like these. But I seriously doubt it. I feel like maybe he just had a not the greatest of days, and then maybe or he wasn't feeling all that well, and the, that he was just happy with uh, uh, with a draw um, uh, with the black pieces against the world classical champion. Maybe that's what it is. But uh, it really doesn't feel like um, yeah, there's something to consider here. You can play indefinitely. You can continue this for as long as you want, and the only outcome can be either a draw or or you know chances are pretty great that you will win this game. So. Very weird stuff. Uh, I will have more knowledge to share with you uh, in the next video. Uh, so yeah, and that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, unfortunately for, for Yasser, it uh, didn't come true. It wasn't um, uh, really Morphe versus Amateur, but now you know what the 
uh, refer uh, reference stands for. Uh, so I yeah, really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Lord of Bones, Mazin Elserag. Thank you for videos, Dr. Heisenberg and Ding Fan for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of this wonderful event uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.